what we do a little bit of integration. So the question is to integrate from 0 to 1 the square root of 16 minus 16 x squared dx. So the first thing we can do is take out the 16 outside of the square root, which gives us a 4, and we can also take it outside of the integration sign. So that's 4 times the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Okay. Now, the area in integration is the integral from a to b of y dx. So before we go ahead and start doing our integration here, let's have a look at what the square root of 1 minus x squared actually is. So if we take a circle, center 0, 0, our equation is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And if we take it with a, as a unit circle with a radius of length 1, length 1 then obviously it's x squared plus y squared equals 1. That would make y squared equals 1 minus x squared, and y would equal the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's actually what we're doing here, square root of 1 minus x squared. Now our limits here are from 0 to 1, so that's from 0 to 1. So this is actually what we're doing. We're finding the area of this portion of the circle. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared, and then if it's a unit circle, it's pi by 1 squared, so it's pi. And this is obviously a quarter of it, so in this case it would be pi over 4. So we should get, for all this here, pi over 4 multiplied by 4, so we should get pi. So let's see how we do that. Uh, for um, integration, normally we let the substitution equal u, but this is, um, we say, an exceptional case, and the substitution is x. So you let x sine theta, and then differentiation gives dx equals cos theta d theta. Now, when we read this, we read 4 times the integral of the square root of 1 minus x squared dx from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So, uh, since we're getting rid of our x's and we're going to be dealing with theta, everything has to be in terms of theta. So, we need to change our limits. So, if x is 0, obviously that means sine theta equals 0, in which case theta is 0. And then if x equals 1, that means sine theta equals 1, and now we need to find what theta would be. So theta would be the inverse sine of 1, so theta is pi over 2. So now we would just replace our x and dx and put everything in terms of um, theta. So our limits are when x was 0, theta was 0, when x was 1, theta was pi over 2, and it's the square root of 1 minus x is sine theta, so x squared is sine squared theta. And then dx is cos theta d theta. And 1 minus sine squared is cos squared theta by cos theta d theta. And the square root of cos squared is the same as the square root of x squared, which is x, so it's cos theta by cos theta d theta. And cos by cos is just cos squared theta. don't integrate products, we differentiate, no problem, but uh, um, for integration we put things in a format that allows us to integrate it. And cos squared theta is a half times 1 plus cos 2 theta. And we can take that half outside the integration sign and 4 by half is just 2. And now all we have to integrate is this bit here. And integrating that with respect to, th to theta, 1 becomes theta cos goes to sine, and the differentiation and integration, your angle never changes, and in integration we divide by the differential of the angle, that gives you a half, and our limits are not to pi over 2. And all we have to do now is sub in our limits. So you sub in the top limit, so theta is pi over 2, plus a half sine, 2 times pi over 2. And then take away, sub in the bottom limit, and theta is now 0, plus a half, sine 2 times 0, which is 0, and that gives us 2 times pi over 2, and sine 2, 
2 times pi over 2 is pi, sine of pi is 0, and half times 0 is 0. Not, half, sine of naught is naught by half plus naught is naught. So all we're left with is 2 times pi over 2. 